Okay, so today we're looking at a Kodak Brownie. This is a 620 camera model D. It's got flash contacts on the side. These are these two things here. It's a bit of a dent around the key button, around the key there, which you might be able to see if we tilt it. I've straightened it out as much as I can. This is the shutter release button. Uh, doesn't need winding on between shutters. Uh, you can also see close up. And the way that you do close up is you pull that out and that moves another lens in front of the lens that's already there. So I've set it to bulb on this little slider here. Press the shutter release button. So you can see inside there. And then if I push to normal, you can see it goes in. And if I pull it to close up, it puts another lens in front of the other lens. So now I'm going to put it back to high. See that fire is on. And if I do it that way around, you should see it. You can just see the shutter moving as well. Okay. On the inside of there, you can see it says Kodak 620 film. Um, and that means that means that in here. 620 film would go across the back so I'm going to pull the winder knob on the side and that releases the insert and then I can take that out and then I can move the camera away on the back of the camera you see this little red window that's for seeing the number on the film to so you know which which film image you're on there's also a waist level viewfinder on the top and also one on the side as well, so you can see outside. Uh, so you can see through the through the front of the viewfinder there. Here it is today that I'm going to put uh, a 120 film in, and I'm going to be using an Ilford HP5 Plus. Um, and you'll see that there is a difference. So if I go into here, so this is the metal one uh, 620 spool that was in the camera when I bought it. Um, sometimes you, it's difficult to buy those on eBay or somewhere else so it's easier sometimes to get them uh, actually in a camera already. The only difference is, and I can show you this on a on an exposed film, um, so these are the two reels, top one there is a 620 and the bottom one is a 120. You can see that just the difference in thickness. If we do that, you can see that there's a little bit just on the edge. It's almost, it's almost this little raised edge around the outside has to come off. And that has to come off each end. And then that will then align the size with the size difference on there between the 620 and the 120. So I'm going to trim off the edges of a film uh, and then we'll try and get that working in this camera. So I'm going to try that on a roll of HP 5 Plus from Ilford. Bin. So there's the film out of the wrapper. Um, obviously you can see there's a roller on the top and the bottom. So the film plane is this back plane here. So you can see that the front there is the hole that goes to the shutter and the lens. So we have to have the film on the top. So you would put your roll of film on the top. And then that would unroll over the top of this roller, over this roller, and then round the spool of film um, that you've got there anti-clockwise if you're looking at the side of the camera. So that means that this 620 roll, another one, the empty spool would go into the bottom, into place there, and the key goes into this little hole here where it says key side and then that then 
winds the film that way. So the film comes around here and then into the top and then it gets wound on. If I have a plastic 120 roll that it I don't need to worry about the bottom end where the key is. You can see also the size of the holes on the sides is different. Um, so the key that goes in this that is in this camera is designed for that size hole. Uh, you can see it's a bit larger, but it doesn't matter because I have a 620 take up roll on the bottom. I can use a 120 take up 120 roll of film on the top, um, and because this key isn't used. Um, to wind this roll, this just merely pulls the pulls the film off as it goes over the top. So there's, it's not so critical that this is the right size hole. So what I'm going to do now. I'm going to put that into into there, so you can see that the film would turn pretty freely. This is an unexposed roll of 120, and I'm going to trim it using some nail clippers. So you can see that's taken down. It's a lot smoother than when I did it with the side cutters. So I'm going to do that again. But this time I'll see. So what I'm doing, I'm pressing the bottom jaw against the side of the film. And that gives me the gauge of where the top one needs to be. And then work your way around. should end up with a fairly smooth <coughs> top to there. So there now, that is ready to go into the film back. I think so that's the camera all ready to go. This is the film. You can see the take up spool on the bottom already. Um, <clears throat> so now I'm going to put the film that I've just trimmed the ends off. I'm just going to try it for size actually. Into there. And you can see that that works fine. And then I'm going to take off the paper wrapping. See that? So now pull that through. I'm just going to keep a bit of tension with this finger on there, and now I'm going to pull this <coughs> over the back and feed it. So this hole turns that way. So I'm going to feed it the slot there if it will go through yeah and it does eventually so now I can wind that on anti-clockwise and you can see as I wind it the unexposed word is disappearing So that means it's wrapping correctly onto the roller. You can see some arrows there. So that means we're about to start exposing the film. So I'm going to pop that back into the camera. Seal the back up. Pop the key down. And then use that to wind it the rest of the way. I'm also now just going to briefly 
undo that and you can see the bright color from the back in. So as I move that around, you can see that that's the double arrow line just going through there. So as I keep winding that, it should take me down to the first frame. And it should show me a number on the back. Paper backing I took from a film that I've recently processed. So you can see here that we've got some arrows. So we've got this we've got the double arrow and as we move up there's some other arrows. And then also we have number one there. So if I lay that on the back, what we should see, we should see a number one turn up into that window. And then as we wind through to the next shot. You should see number two and then number three turn up in that little window. So let's keep winding and we'll have a look. So if I keep winding that night, so I'm just going to focus on that window there. So there's one of the little arrows that we saw and there's another arrow so that means keep going. And then there's the three dots. And then we should see the number one. So that means we're now ready to take our first picture on this 620 camera. And then wind it round. There's some little dots turning up, and there's frame number two. I don't actually think I need that black tape on, but a lot of people recommend it, so I will. Okay. Kodak 620 Browning, Model D, with a 120 film loaded into it, and then when the film's loaded, um, I will take it. Uh, unload the film from it uh, and process the photographs uh, in the darkroom uh, and then I'll post those up as well. That'll be good.